Hi, I'm Mark. This is Tanya. Her name is like this because she has dimples. I recently spent some time with Mark during New Zealand Sign Language Week. I wanted to know what that means to the deaf community and to those of us who are hearing. Tanya and I will explore what deaf people need to be included in our society. New Zealand Sign Language is this country's third official language. It's enshrined in law and has its own week. But what exactly does that mean and why should we care? I have a dream that deaf and hearing people will come together. It would be beautiful to see everyone come together as equals. I want deaf people to have many friends and more choices. At the moment, the deaf and hearing worlds are quite separate, simply because hearing people know so little about deaf people. To hearing people, the deaf community is an invisible group. I think when a hearing person meets a deaf person, they get some insight because they may consider a deaf person as someone who can't talk and therefore signs. They're not aware of any culture beyond that. When I meet hearing friends, they tell me that meeting deaf people or learning about deaf people has been awesome for them. So I think it's important that there is more awareness about deaf culture. That would be good. Do you feel like the deaf community are isolated from the hearing world? Last Saturday I had a free evening and I decided to rent a movie. There was one film in particular I wanted to see. I'd read reviews of the film and I'd heard the hype and I liked the actors. I really wanted to see it. Unfortunately when I checked the DVD case, the film didn't have subtitles which is frustrating. It may seem like a small thing, but it's difficult. And of course, living in Wellington, I'm surrounded by theatre performances that I'd like to see, but it's too hard to get interpreters for these sorts of things. When I'm in the hearing world, it can be frustrating because some people don't make any effort to make communication easier. When I try to use their language, spoken English, but if it's not clear, they just come back with, what's that? What are you saying? The information is there, they just aren't making any effort to understand it. People need to learn some patience and try to concentrate a little more. I've noticed hearing people can be unfocused. Okay, and would you like to have it here or something? Have it here. Sweet, just grab um, it. Well, I'll show it here. Well, fit was. Well, fit was. Yeah. With tapu sauce. Sure. Sure. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Put there. I order the same drink at my favourite cafe all the time, but the staff change. Some know what I want straight away, others just don't get it. 
If they just tried to listen, they'd understand. But sometimes they just panic at having to communicate with a deaf customer. Oh my god, what's he saying? What's he saying? Mark dreams of bringing the deaf and the hearing worlds closer together. I'm not sure how he's going to do that. I mean, how does he convince people like me to learn sign language? What's the incentive? One incentive should be that it's an official language of New Zealand. I think there are lots of incentives and benefits for hearing people learning sign language. Probably the most important benefit for people when they meet a deaf person is they can simply communicate with them. What is really going to have an impact for deaf people if more people learn sign language? I think it would mean that deaf people would have more friends and more choice of friends, which would mean deaf people have more variety in their lives, which could lead to deaf people being more confident to being involved in different things, which at the moment they think they can't be involved in. But perhaps with more hearing people learning sign language, it would give them the encouragement they needed to give things a go. Having more people knowing sign language would just be awesome. Yeah, yeah, great fun. Yeah, do you hear me? No? That's your sign language. There's many benefits to signing. Here's just a few. You can understand sign language from a really long way away. You can even communicate underwater. Awesome. And don't forget, you can use sign language clearly in a noisy bar. Sign language is great if you have a sore throat, or you lost your voice, or if you don't want people to hear you. And you can meet awesome people, like me. Hey, are you busy? Oh, uh, yes, but no, I've got a bit of time free. I've got a few minutes. Great, I'll come and see you. Thank you. Well, we have three official languages in New Zealand. We've got English, Māori and Sign Language. And we all, most of us know English. Um, and to speak with a Māori person, you don't normally need to know Māori because they know English. But to speak with someone who's deaf, then you, know, you need to know sign. And so I think English and Sign Language should be compulsory because we learn Māori compulsory in primary schools and stuff. I think it should be the same with Sign Language. Tell me what inspired you to learn Sign Language. I just love watching it. and. Um, I thought if I could do it, it would just be double as awesome. So I decided that when I came to Wellington, I'd pick it up. But first year, I had papers that clash. So I tried again in second year, and I could take it. And now it's just completely changed. And I'm moving to Auckland next year to become an interpreter and stuff. So it's like changed my life, kind of. It's pretty awesome. Mark, I'm feeling a bit left out now. Can you teach me some sign language? <laughs> Avoid. Oh, yes. <laughs> your, your face is important. <laughs> I 
was lucky growing up to have a deaf brother so we could actually support each other. We were bouncing ideas off each other and we didn't feel alone, so that was great. Our family were really supportive, but beyond that I went to a mainstream school and I was one deaf person in amongst a full class of hearing students. When the teacher spoke at the front of the class, I didn't understand any of it for the whole day. So it was really hard to follow and I focused mostly on reading from books and also copying from other people next to me. So a lot of time at school, I didn't really understand the topics. But then when I got home, my parents would sit down with me and ask what I did. I'd show them the book. They would explain it. They would repeat to both of us, my brother and I, and it was easy for us to lip read within the family because we knew each other so well. So I really got a lot of my education from my parents. As we grew up, my brother became my tutor as well, so that family support was paramount. At the time, they had special education services to support deaf children in schools. But I received very little to no support. Mark, when you're in the hearing world, like, what sort of person do you feel you have to be so you can fit in? When I was in Christchurch, I felt like I had to be funny or a fun guy because that was the only way people could enjoy my company if I was being funny. And so humour was a way of getting people's attention, enough to start a conversation or end friendships. Typically when I go into a party, things begin quietly, but if I can entertain, then people see me as more approachable. Now I feel like I can be myself more when I'm being funny. Or perhaps it's just that I'm funny looking. I've got no idea what the guys are saying. But I must admit, it's a really beautiful and expressive language. And Mark's the only deaf person in the group. I think for members of the public who have never really seen sign language or have never really encountered it, a lot of people don't realise that sign language is actually a full and complete language. There's an assumption that it's dumbed down or it's a more simple and certainly inferior to English or French or other languages. People make that assumption. In some ways, my kids who are hearing benefit. They've developed the understanding that their parents are different, mum's deaf, and signs, and dad's not.
thank you. It's obviously a great struggle for those hearing parents to figure out how they learn sign language. There are night classes that they can go to, but those night classes focus on communication for adults. So you learn how to introduce yourself or talk about the weather. It isn't the vocabulary you need to be talking with your children. We've produced a DVD to teach people how to communicate with children of, of this age. Millie, Millie, who's this? I really want to be included in the school activities, but there's just no funding to cover the cost of having an interpreter, which really affects me. I really want to be there. I want to be involved and support my son. I want him to see me encouraging him. It's really hard. There's also no funding for interpreters for me to attend teacher parent interviews, which is a real concern because I want to know how my son is doing at school so that then I can encourage and support him. So I feel really excluded and that's hard for me. I feel like I can't be involved, even though I want to. There are just too many obstacles, particularly around those school things that I mentioned before. I feel really excluded, second class, and that frustrates me. It's sad. I'm used to this after years of similar circumstances growing up as a deaf person. The obstacles have always been there, but now it's different because those obstacles affect my children, and that's more distressing because my children see that their mum can't be involved like other mums can. So that's even more sad that my children have to see that. I've been living here in Wellington for two and a half months now. I haven't had to use my voice much. Not like I did when I was living in Christchurch, where I used to use my voice and lip read constantly. Now I've pretty much stopped doing that, and it feels really, really good. What's it like for you, Mark? Are there some times when you actually do find it quite difficult being a young deaf guy in the hearing world? Sometimes I can't be involved in groups or committees, even though I'd like to because I don't have the access. For example, university has class reps and my halls of residence have a student rep per floor. And there are other committees I'm keen to be involved with, but I just can't, the communication would take too long. Plus, the halls of residence won't pay for interpreters for meetings. I'm really keen to be involved. I have lots of ideas to share, but it would just be too hard to communicate. So how does that make you feel when you're not able to be included like that? When I'm not included, it makes me feel a bit down and a bit disappointed and sad because I know I could do these things and enjoy doing these things. I'm an active person. When I was at deaf school, I was involved in heaps of things, but now I'm in the hearing world. I feel excluded. I think hearing people look down on me and view me because I'm deaf as a bit clueless and unable to contribute. But the reality is, if they were to include me, they'd realise that isn't the case 
and that deaf people have impressive ideas and skills. In the late 1880s, immigrants brought British Sign Language to New Zealand. But for nearly 100 years, educators banned children from using sign language. So began a period of oral education, where children were taught to lip read, made to speak, even forced to sit on their hands. But children and adults continued to use sign language. It survived underground in places like Deaf Club and developed into the unique and indigenous language it is today. There's just a lot more information and description and documentation about sign language now so people can actually, you know, hearing people can actually learn the language and they can be more aware of it and deaf people have got a stronger sense of pride and feeling that they can share the language with other people. So now with the younger generations, they regard it as a language and as a natural thing to be doing. And I think society just sees deaf people signing and is more recognising of what that is, that it's a language and it belongs to a community. I was wondering if you could explain to me like, how important um, New Zealand Sign Language is for and how, how it's sort of linked to deaf culture and how, why the language is so important. Well, the language is really the heart of the culture. Without the fact that deaf people use sign language with each other, they wouldn't actually be a community. And so the language is the thing that, first of all, brings them together and bonds them as a community. And it's also the medium through which they pass on knowledge to each other and traditions and stories and all the things that are part of culture. What do you think are some of the frustrations for deaf people? There are still many barriers experienced by the deaf community, areas that they can't access. One of the most important things is that deaf children have education. Sure, I completed my education, but deaf children are the future of the deaf community. For some people it might seem strange, but we feel like a big whanau. We really need to improve education for the deaf youth of today to become community members of the future. There's a huge barrier to education. If there's access to education, then we don't need those other people lobbying for us later on. We can lobby for ourselves. We can be more proactive. So education and access to the curriculum in sign language are key. Reckon, Mark. I mean, there's definitely been some improvements, but what do you think needs to change? We need more funding for interpreters because I feel like I've got plenty I could contribute to society, but I can't because of the language barriers. So it's disappointing. subtitles, interpreters, etc. There's a lot of mainstream culture, everyday life, that deaf people miss out on and end up feeling quite isolated. You could compare it to like a foreigner coming to this country, but of course they could soon learn English and get involved and do what they want when they want. Everyone has the right to communicate and um, it's not a privilege to communicate, it is a right. And so therefore, um, it's not just about deaf people communicating with other deaf people, it's about um, all people being able to communicate in different languages. I still don't think we've really got our message through about sign language. I don't think New Zealand is really committed to encouraging its use. Sign language is part of New Zealand society, and we're all part of that society, so we should embrace it. I grew up in New Zealand having been born deaf, and to be perfectly honest, I've never known the words of our national anthem. I don't think I'm alone in that. I think a lot of other deaf people don't know the words either.
how did you feel taking a look outside your world and looking in? It's been fascinating. There's lots of hearing people keen to learn to sign. But they don't know how and where. But it's great to see. We'll see you next week. How would I describe myself? Hmm. Like to make new friends. Like to shout. I'm a pretty out there person. I don't really see myself as being that much different to anybody else. I hate being the center of attention. I have no friggin' clue. I don't care what anyone really thinks about me. I didn't care when I was younger what people thought of me, and I still don't. I also get looks like, oh, she's got one leg. It's just like, hey, do you have an eye problem or something? Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Good evening and welcome to the third annual Attitude Awards. Tomorrow is the last day we're accepting nominations for this year's Attitude Awards. And as it is evening, good evening. We're celebrating the achievements of Kiwis living with a disability and we need you to think about who deserves recognition. Check out our website for details. Attitude was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.